How's it going everyone? It's time for a five at five and unfortunately this comes after Arsenal have lost one of the biggest North London derbies in recent years. It is what it is, let's get into my five. Now, number one, and you might be thinking this is going to be about the penalty, but it's not. It's actually about Arsenal's record in the Premier League this season when we've gone a goal down. The reason I'm not going to talk about the penalty is because, listen, it's a given. I see 99% of fans in agreement that that was never, ever a penalty. So um, I think what's more important, we can't control necessarily what the referees do and silly penalties that are given against us. But what we can control is how we respond to going down um, in games. And now Mikel Arteta, especially for an inexperienced manager with an inex inexperienced squad, has done quite well this season. Now, different people have their different opinions on him, but especially if he gets top four, I think that's quite a good achievement, especially with the squad that he has. And even if we do get pipped on the final day and we finish fifth, yes, the season will be uh, a real disappointment. But ultimately, I think a lot of people can see the positive signs and the work that he's done. But one thing that Mikel Arteta needs to be doing as a young manager, manager is looking at what areas can he improve on that need some work that he can eke out a few more points next season with and also just areas of weakness for him as a, as a manager. I say one areas of weakness for him is that he knows how to be ruthless but does he really know how to repair relationships? That's something I'm yet to see from him but that's a much longer term fix. I don't think that's something you can change overnight. More of an on the pitch one is okay what do we do? What is our setup to try and retain some points out of a game and win these games when we go 1-0 down? As you can see from this little graphic here, one game where we've gone down and managed to turn it around to win. We haven't drawn a game after we've gone down, but we've lost eight of them. That's an awful record. We need to be much, much better than that because not every time you go out on the pitch is it going to go your way. We need to learn how to respond properly. I guess with the amount of red cards that we get, it's never going to be helpful. This stat doesn't include which one of those games where we had a red card, but that's the first port of call. No more reds. And um, secondly, Mikel Arteta needs to get back to basics and understand how best to deal with going a goal down because we're not doing very well. Number two, and listen, it is important, especially in a North London derby defeat, especially at this time of the season where we need that unity and our team to bounce back, it's important to stick together. But without sort of uh, getting too critical, I think one thing that Arsenal fans have to do, and I have spoken about the ref in my fan cam, which is linked below, and, you know, I know that we're all a bit aggrieved about how the game was officiated. But touching on the point one where we don't do very well when we go a goal behind, I think Rob Holding embodied how poor our response was to going a goal behind. We cannot afford to lose our heads to that extent in the way that Rob Holding did. And if we're being really honest about it, in a really big game, He's one of our more experienced players and he should have known better. He should have done a lot better in that moment. In hindsight, when you look at the game and you think to yourself, OK, fine, we're 1-0 down, but it's 11 men on 11 men. Or you could say 12 because I've got Paul Tony. But in any case, we've still got 11 men on the pitch. You still hope that, yep, keep it tight. If you if you go into halftime 1-0 down, you can have a big second half and hopefully get something out of the game. Game management is important there. But within 35 minutes, when you're a goal down and you're a man down, it's just a really, really bad start. And Rob Holding was very, very guilty in putting Arsenal in that position. So I think as Arsenal fans, we need to look at yesterday's game and put it into context and say, actually, as much as Paul Tini let us down, so did Rob Holding. And maybe take some accountability for the performance and the result yesterday. We have to move on. In the last couple of games of the season, we better learn from that and not make life more difficult than it already will be away at Newcastle and at home to Everton, who potentially have got survival to play for. Number three, you guys, you know me. I try and accept Arsenal's flaws. I try and give the team praise. So I see that Rob Holding let us down. He deserved a red card. I'm trying to be honest and say the penalty shouldn't have been a red card. And here, for me, is another crucial incident that completely had the potential to change the shape of the game. And this is that sly son. Why people think this guy's a likeable player is beyond me. Don't get me wrong. He's a very, very good player. But it's incidents like what I'm about to show you that really, really wind me up. 
Have a watch of this. You can see it on your screen. I'm gonna let it loop a few times so you can really have a look and pay attention to what Sun is doing here. This is in the 11th minute or 12th minute. Rob Holding is on the floor with Sun. Sun with one arm tries to elbow him in the face and with the other arm within half a second is appealing to the ref for a decision. Come on, this is a absolute joke. How can you elbow with one arm and appeal with the other? The fact that he gets away with this Harry Kane, we've seen him get away with countless um, sly little moves that have got serious ability to injure a player. I just find really, really tiresome. All I'm saying is that if the officials had done their job properly, if they had referred to VAR when they needed to refer to VAR, this is quite clear and obvious as far as I'm concerned. If the officials do their job properly, Sun's off the pitch in the 12th minute and then the whole game goes differently. So it's hard to not feel aggrieved by it. It's hard to really criticised Mikel Arteta too much for his post-match interview when he was asked by a um, journalist about the game. I can see why he's fuming. I can see why he's really, really annoyed. Situations like this obviously make you annoyed as a fan, as a player, as a manager of the club. Tottenham won't care because they've gone and got away with it and now they've put some serious pressure on Arsenal. But you know what? If we finish the next two games with six points, we will be laughing. And even in spite of dirty little tricks like this from Sun, we'll still qualify for the Champions League and Tottenham would have lost the war. Number four, it's only fair that I speak about the manager. I've spoken about the refs, I've spoken about Rob Holding, I've spoken about Sun, but Mikel Arteta made one massive mistake in this game. Before the game, the one thing that I was saying that concerns me the most is Cedric on Sun. We know Sun is one of, if not Tottenham's best players, certainly it's between Sun and Kane, right? They're quite one-dimensional in that respect, where really, if you can nullify their threat, you can basically nullify Tottenham. And for that reason, I felt like Mikel Arteta had to show some respect to the opposition and their quality and make sure that we put Tomiyasu on Sun and not Cedric. What does he do? He goes and plays Cedric. And for a while, Cedric came in and was actually performing okay. But that's the problem with squad players, that when they're there for too long, you see that initial boost that they might get when they know, when they know they're in there only short term, kind of lose a little bit and, and you get their mistakes coming through. And I think we've seen that with Cedric. In recent games, he hasn't been the best. And away in such a crucial North London derby against one of the better players in the league in, in Sun, let's face it, he had one job on his hands and I don't think he fared very well. He had um, no dual success out of six duels attempted and also going forward, three crosses attempted, no successful crosses. I mean, it was a bad display for him going forward. It was a bad display for him at the back. Mikel Arteta should have known better and should have stuck Cedric on the left-hand side and put Tomiyasu on the right-hand side to deal with Sun. Let me know if you agree or whether you think that I'm calling it wrong. It's certainly not in hindsight. I did say this before the game, but I'd love to know your thoughts. Put them in the comments below. Number five, and this is what it's all about. Look, this game is one game in a 38-game season, and yes, it means a lot. I'm not going to lie. But if Tottenham win this battle and Arsenal win the war, that's what matters to me most. So I want to ask you guys a question here. Every single one of you that's watching this, I want you to comment below and just reply with the word Arsenal or with the word Tottenham. The question is, whose position would you rather be in right now? Clearly, we're still ahead of them in the league. We've got two games left. They've got two games left. We've got Newcastle away, Everton at home. They've got to play Burnley and uh, Norwich. So, whose position would you rather be in? For me, I'm firmly going to say Arsenal. I've got belief in this team. The fixtures are always difficult in the Premier League, but I'd rather be one point clear and have it in your own hands instead of waiting for your opposition to need to slip up before you can sneak in there. Hopefully, Arsenal will do it. Let me know which position you'd rather be in. That's this five at five done. Hopefully against Newcastle and against Everton, I can get back to being a bit more upbeat and there will be very, very important victories. If we do that, it's our return to the Champions League for the first time in six years, which will be huge for our summer transfer budget and also this project that we're undertaking with Mikel Arteta. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much to my sponsors of this video, Exquisite Smoke. And also, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe and like this video. Take care.